Good morning, I'm Carolina Gaisa Velasco. I'm a research psychologist and I work at the University of Paris in France. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to this conference and to send my warm greetings in these uncertain times to all the people who participate in this event around the world. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about autism, hypermobility and EDS. In the first part, I try to summarize what we find in the literature on this topic. And in the second part, I will address some point of clinical interest. Autism spectrum disorders refer to a group of neurodevelopmental conditions characterized by difficulties with communication and interactions with other people and restricted interests and repetitive behaviors. The spectrum encompasses clinical presentations in which distinctions are made according to severity levels. The etiology and clinical presentation are heterogeneous and symptoms generally appear by age two or three, affecting the person's ability to function properly in school, work and other areas of life. I worked some years in an autism service in the south of France. At that time, I was well familiarized with hypermobility related disorders since it was the topic of my doctoral thesis. So when working with children with autism, we often noted in routine assessment a striking flexibility, especially enhanced movement as we see in these pictures. That could be considered as suggestive of hypermobility. Sometimes we can recognize hypermobility through motor mannerism that are frequent in these patients. These observations motivated a review of the literature to find out if this somatic trait and the associated problems were overrepresented in people with autism or if it was just me who was, was seeing hypermobility everywhere. Literature linking autism and hypermobility related disorder is very scarce. Some case reports have been published. Fellow and tested in the 80s were among the first to report a case of an adolescent boy presenting with EDS classical type in association with autistic symptoms. In the 90s, Tantam et al. published three cases, two girls and one boy diagnosed with Asperger syndrome and coexisting with hypermobility and muscular incoordination, suggesting a disorder of cognitive tissue. Other cases in this line were published later. Concerning systematic studies, very few have been published. The study by Shetra Klein et al. confirmed our clinical observations. In this, researchers compare joint mobility between children with autism and children with typical development. They found that those with autism had significantly greater joint mobility in fingers, wrist, elbow, and ankle, as well as more gait abnormalities than the control group. More recently, a Swedish study in a large cohort of people with EDS and hypermobility syndrome observed that autism spectrum disorders was overrepresented in EDS patients. Indeed, 2.9% of EDS patients present autism versus 0.4% in the control group. As we see, there is currently little data on the relationship between autism and hypermobility-related disorders. So we have more questions than answers. However, this scares by growing body of research suggests that both conditions occur more often than expected by chance. Once the link between autism and hypermobility-related disorder is established, their common etiological and pathophysiological mechanism should be identified. These mechanisms are currently poorly understood, but some hypotheses can be evoked. First, despite the clinical variability of the reported cases, the repeatedly observed coincidence of autism and hypermobility-related disorders 
does not exclude a pleiotropic manifestation of a common genetic milieu, which deserve to be better scrutinized. The explanation by Tanto et al. proposed that a disorder of connective tissue may result in central nervous system abnormalities. Interestingly, interesting, in 2012, Eccles et al. reported structural brain differences between people with and without hypermobility in areas involved in emotion processing, attention, cognitive control of pain, and areas related to processing social and emotional signals. Another aspect is brain heterotopia, which refers to brain mal malformations resulting from deficit of neuronal migration. Brain heterotopias have been described in autism and EDS, providing another clue in understanding the overlap between both conditions. Moreover, immunological dysfunction and endocrine dysregulation have been also described in autism and EDS. The works by Emily Casanova and colleagues from the University of South California provide interesting data on this topic. Another hypothesis is an indir indirect light link on which a disorder of the connective tissue alter motor development and preposception, preventing the optimal acquisition of nonverbal communication skills, which may lead to autistic traits such as impairment in social interactions. This scheme takes up this idea and extends it to other developmental disorders. In this list, we see some frequent features in the hypermobil hypermobility spectrum and especially hypermobility EDS, such as hypermobility, dysautonomia, pain, proposition impairment, etc. This uh, aspect can have consequences in terms of motor and cognitive problems and problematic behaviors in response to pain or to proposition seeking. That in turn may lead to developmental activism like autistic trait. Thus, generalized hypermobility may affect brain plasticity during development due to its changing consequences on muscle tone, posture, and movement. All these hypotheses should be studied in further research. As we know, there is a lack of awareness among the medical community concerning the clinical presentation of EDS and comorbidities. Autism and EDS are seen by different medical fields, such as psychiatry in the case of autism and musculoskeletal disciplines and genetics in the case of hypermobility-related disorders. Thus, a connection between them is rarely established in clinical setting. No doubt raising awareness on this connection can have important clinical benefits. A start is to know that autism spectrum disorders and EDS share several characteristics. Both group of condition are etiologically heterogeneous with a strong genetic component. Despite this, there is no confirmatory biological test, so the diagnosis remains clinical. Clinical heterogeneity means that there is a wide range of possible presentation, so clinical signs and symptoms may vary considerably from patient to patient. Another similarity is that in both conditions, symptoms appear in childhood. Chronicity is another common aspect, as well as the disabling potential that this condition may have. In this point, the variability is important. Indeed, there are people who maintain a high level of autonomy while others are in situations of great dependency. In addition, in both conditions, comorbidity is the rule rather than the exception, and several phenotypical features are shared. Similarities in the clinical presentation of ASD and EDS should be taken into account for improved diagnosis accuracies, 
accuracy. If not, each professional will see what is in their clinical repertoire according to their discipline without integration that have negative consequences for patients. In addition to the mentioned common points, in both conditions, it's relatively frequent to find the, the problems that you see in this slide. Hypermobility, motor delay, motor impairment, social withdrawal, unusual sensory sensitivities, disturbance of the body schema, sleeping and swallowing problem, etc. I would like to illustrate the similarities with a case. Tim is a 12 years old boy, referred to the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine due to motor problems. The motor difficulties, which started in early childhood, included toe walking, poor stability, poor tonic control and regulation, difficulties in object assembling, clumsiness with frequent falls and bumps. In this list, are the problems encountered in their medical record. For example, a failure to respond to his name and random eye contact when he was a toddler. Particular behaviors such as repeating sequences of films, frequent hand washing and shearing clothes, social withdrawal and food selectivity. Tim also presents hypersensitivity and high anxious manifestation for a small minimal injury. Learning difficulties were also described, mainly in handwriting, attention, and working memory. His intellectual functioning is in the normal range. The several examinations he underwent, including neurological, psychiatric, psychological, and psychomotor assessment, resulted in the diagnosis of pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. At that time, this diagnosis was applied to those who were not on the autism spectrum, uh, no, who were on the, uh, on the autism spectrum, but do not fully meet the criteria for another ISD. So are generally considered uh, to exhibit milder symptoms of autism. We can note that all problems highlighted in color are also frequently reported by parents of children with hypermobile EDS. Now in this slide, we can see the results of the exploration at the rehabilitation service. This revealed a positive Bayton score for, for hypermobility, history of recurrent sprain and blocks, thin skin, abnormal scarring, easy breathing, dysautonomia, symptoms, dysautonomia symptoms such as excessive sweating, poor thermoregulation, unexplained fever episodes, dry eyes and mood, dizziness, and all the features that you see in this list. Finally, and having ruled, uh, having ruled out other genetic possibilities, a diagnosis of EDS was retained for this patient according to the all criteria. The influence of motor and sensory capacity on behavior is undeniable. In this regard, features of hypermobile EDS, such as motor difficulties, tissue fragility, sensory hypersensitivity, autonomic dysfunction, and the consequences of proprioceptive impairment may impact behavior in an autistic way. So more speculatively, it is possible that certain characteristics often seen in milder autism may be explained by heritable disorder of the con connective tissue such as hypermobile EDS. It's not uncommon to hear from patients, or patients that they avoid noisy environment and even physical contact. Isolation is also frequently reported. They often feel different and misunderstood. In addition, clumsiness and slowness may cause rejection by others, especially at school. Many adult patients with EDS describe they were regarded with some degree of autism when they were younger. This issue illustrates the need to train mental health professionals to the clinical presentation of EDS in order to improve diagnostic accuracy and early referral. 
Another point of clear interest that I would like to highlight this time concerning severe autism is that the presence of hypermobility in this patient should not be tri trivialized since can be a clue to identify chronic pain. This is particularly relevant since pain in people with autism remains often, often uh, disregarded and untreated due to communication difficulties. Studies show that children with autism react with self-injurious behavior after a painful experience. Thus, the onset or accentuation of self injuries or other behavioral problems might be a manifestation of pain. In this slide, we see the case of a teenager with severe autism followed by colleagues in a Parisian neurobehavioral unit. Nicolas has intellectual disability and no functional language. He presents significant aberrant behaviors, mainly self injuries resisting to multidisciplinary management. The team hypothesized that self-injuries could be allergic behaviors. After, after exploration, Nicolas was diagnosed with EDS. He has a spectacular hypermobility, recurrent sprain, and other manifestations. The physician recommended, recommended compression garments, whose in a previous French study showed positive effect on postural control in patients with EDS. The results in Nicholas were quite positive, since the frequency of auto and heteroaggressive behaviors decreased. As Dupuy-Tal stated, compressive, compressive garments, due to their mechanical effect, are thought to enhance joint captation and increase the pressure of the subcutaneous connective tissue to a normal range. And compressive garments may enhance somatosensory feedback to the brain. To continue exploring the usefulness of compression garments as a coadjuvant treatment in children with autism, the same team conducted a study in which 14 young patients with severe autism presenting major challenging behaviors participated. Half of them had generalized hypermobility. Patients wear compressive garments for at least one hour per day during six weeks. Participants were assessed at baseline two weeks and, and six weeks for challenging behavior, sensory integration, postural sway, and gross motor performance through a self-designed motricity path. Promising results were observed. That is a reduction of aberrant behaviors at two weeks, at two weeks persisting at six weeks, and benefits in terms of, of postural control and motor performance. And very important, the compressive garments were well tolerated. We are unable to determine whether the compressive garments modulates a latent pain disturbance through a gate effect simply by providing a relaxing feeling of comfort or actively substitute for some sensorial disturbance and even facilitating sensory integration. In any case, researches with a more adapted design should be done in order to explore these and other management strategies for this subgroup of patients that are lacking so far. To conclude, I want to highlight three basic idea, ideas. First, we have to work to increase awareness among health professionals about the clinical presentation of these two conditions and about their association. Second, hypermobility may alert about pain in population, population with limited possibility of expression such as severe autism. And finally, more research is needed to confirm the association between hypermobility-related disorders and autism and to elucidate its etiology as well as to identify the best treatment strategy for patients presenting both conditions. Thank you for your attention.